Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reinforce 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to the live CUBE coverage here at Boston, Massachusetts. This is theCUBE's coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Special guest, Yura Rubinoff, president of Prime Tech, uh, Cybermind genius, VIP influencer, love having her on. Oh. We are here at AWS Reinforce, AWS inaugural event. Great to have you on, be host with us. And to do more hosting and co-hosting with us as we bring the community CUBE to security. Excellent, I think this is the perfect conference to do that. Sheer and Dave, so day one's in the books. We got another full day of coverage. A lot of action happening. I think the seminal point of this event is that you have Amazon Web Services. They already run the, big, the biggest event, reInvent. They have summits all around the world. Some summits get huge numbers, but this has been rebranded, reinforced by design. This is not an, another summit, Dave. This is, this is a game statement from Amazon. Well, Pat Gelsinger several years ago told us on theCUBE, security's a do-over, <laughs> it's got to be reinvented. And Amazon is reinforcing that message and building it, rebuilding it from the ground up with developers and the, the security, security as code mindset. Yeah, certainly as, as technology advances, cloud security has to advance as well. And the cloud is looking towards technology to know how to differentiate itself and to continue to add to it and change up. And as we talk about AWS, they secure the cloud and, they're, and the customers have to secure in the cloud, which is a very important piece because it almost lends itself when people are talking about how do you secure an environment? And even you look at organizations, there's a talk between the CIO, what's the role of the CIO, and what's the role of the COO. Almost look at it like how AWS really positions itself. Securing the cloud, securing in the cloud, securing the industry itself, securing within the company. And what AWS really has seen and really is doing is it's saying you've got to work hand in hand. It has to be a partnership. And a partnership is able to secure things much better than a one person because then you're putting the onus on everybody. And if everybody's actually thinking about security all the time, it's going to yield best security. And the things we heard, Shira, I want to get your thoughts on. Encryption always on, uh, everyone's watching. So shared responsibility, these are the buzzwords, you know, reasoning. This is industry-wide. I know you do a lot of traveling, you do a lot of public speaking, uh, you do a lot of work with some of the big companies and their transformations. What's, what are you seeing? Because you're out, we're out, you're out there getting the data, we got some data. What's the big trend? What's the macro trend right now, the most important story that needs to be told in this new reimagined security renaissance? Well, I think it's just that. I think that people are moving towards the cloud for the reasons of one plus one equals three. You're going to have the security of the web, for, I'm sorry, of the cloud, and you're also going to have the security of the organization within the cloud. And the organizations are realizing today, moving to the cloud, they can have better overall security. So that is the trend that I'm seeing, certainly from the larger companies out there, and the smaller ones are building it from the ground up. They're saying, you know what, let's make it a solution that we're going to build going right from day one, and not putting band-aids on it to try to make it to secure after. So they're really learning from the experts. Hey Dave, I want to get your thoughts with Sheer on this because you know, all three of us do a lot of content. Uh, we make content for a living. We kind of think about the users in mind, the audience. Well, I overheard a couple things at this event that I've been hearing at other events. Open ecosystems yeah. and the partner networks are developing. And so that makes a lot of sense. Integration is a big part of security. Correct. But I hear people saying, I want to meet more people. I want to meet the person who runs partners of that company. So you have, I've seen for the first time, a real hunger yeah. for social interaction at the events. More hunger for understanding who the other partners, not just what they sell. You know what? But what's on their mind. So interesting you bring that up, and that's a very new piece that we're seeing today. It used to be, this, this is my information, and I'm not sharing it with you. I'm going to build something, and you're going to have to guess what I'm doing, because that's my secret sauce. But companies were realizing that's not going to work. We need to collaborate, we need to share ideas. And the biggest companies are all banding together to share the best breed of technology and the best breed of way to, how to deal with security because they realize that we're all trying to protect also from the same bad actors out there. And they realize by collaborating, they're all stronger as a whole and stronger by themselves as well. So this collaboration is a big deal and that's taking a trend. Hey, what's forward. your take on it? Well, and, and it comes back to something we've talked about a lot today and, and over the years in theCUBE is this whole API yeah. economy. 
Uh, for decades, we've been trying to solve the distributed systems problem. You know, it saw it in little pockets, obviously the internet, but it's in Amazon limited workloads. Did that. <laughs> and, and Amazon has solved that problem. Yeah. Massively scalable distributed systems, and then now it's, okay, how do you secure it? So this shared responsibility model is very interesting, and I think misunderstood. The number one problem we're hearing here that, that, that customers are having is keeping up with Amazon, because Amazon's moving at such a fast pace. That's, that's so rare in the technology industry where you know, the, the customers are, or the vendors are always a little bit ahead of the customers, yeah. but not light years ahead. Amazon is just like pushing them out of the plane. And so I think the shared responsibility model is very important. I think yes. it's misunderstood. Yes. I think people were expecting, oh, Amazon can take care of everything in the cloud, and that's not the case. Correct. So, well, if you're going to use the pushing well, out of the airplane analogy, you got to say, you got to make sure the parachute opens. So well, you pull the ripcord, this is what companies have to understand, that they got to be compatible yeah. with the way the architecture of cloud native works and the right way to lift and shift. So there's a, there's a way to lift and shift and there's a way not to lift and shift. Yeah. You can lift and shift yeah. infrastructure, but you don't, can't lift and shift entire workloads. Very true, but also making somebody responsible for their can of worms is important too, because that also leads back to culture of the organization. If security is part of culture, and they have responsibility as within the cloud that Amazon is pushing, you handle within the cloud, that's your wheelhouse. You do that, that's becoming something that becomes part of culture, and is an everyday thing, which in turn, I talk a lot about cyber hygiene within the organization. Mm -hmm. It's not just training, it's not just awareness, it's not just security and patching, and not just, you know, zero, there's also being aware of it and making it an everyday item that it has to be utilized. Amazon is right on the button with this. You know, I heard a phrase, I love, yeah. the best thing about doing these Cube interviews is that <laughs> you meet such smart people and learn a lot. But I love the quote I heard uh, from the co-founder of Sumo Logic. Uh, he was awesome and he said, process is a reflection of culture. Yeah. And so in the digital transformation equation, which we all know, yeah. it's the cliche, people, process, process technology, technology. Yeah. people, with talent, talent gaps and skill gaps, get it? Technology, plenty of tech. Mm -hmm. Now the process. Well, the process. That's too. always the hardest nut to crack. And most people won't give it up, but they won't fight for it. Yeah. It's the most important. But that's also the glue between the two. You're not going to have a secure environment if you're just dealing with security, and you're not going to have a secure environment just dealing with the people. The process in the middle, and process, yes, the Canadian land of it. <laughs> that's the glue between it. That's what makes it run. And you have to get to that, as you're saying. You have to get to the process. You've got to make that run well. And then you meld the two together. That's full security. The other, the other big thing here, not this conference, but the but, but a theme that we've talked about for quite some time on theCUBE is this notion of big tech. So you know, it's been said that Amazon, Facebook, Google, maybe even Microsoft, Elizabeth Warren saying, break up big tech. Amazon, uh, people have said, split AWS out from you know, core Amazon retail. What do you guys think about that? Um, is that the right thing to no, do? No, I don't think it's the right thing to do. I think Why not? right now, like I said, we had Jameer on, Jameer on earlier, they're not breaking any laws, so and then why would you want to you know, take down what could be a competitive advantage for national yeah, security? Correct. AI is going to be, and machine learning and the role of data is going to be a power source for good and also for safety. Of course. So why would you want to like, take the best companies who are doing the best work and handicap them? Over what argument? Okay. Well, I think some, if, that Facebook so, wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't responsible in dealing with making billions of dollars in free cash flow? So the argument the election, was, they broke democracy. So that was, okay, too big, well, that's not a good argument. No. Um, maybe appropriating our data to sell more ads, you know, that should be looked at, don't you well, think? Well, I just don't buy the tech for good, bad argument because yes, yeah, some bad things have happened, but the regulators and the lawmakers, you can't legislate what you don't understand, you can't regulate what you don't understand, so as it's been, been coming out from the biggest minds in, in tech and in government, the lawmakers aren't smart enough yet. They got to get, it's like they're in kindergarten, yeah. crayon outside the lines, they're like trying to like write, they don't even know what tech is. You know is, what, so you've been talking about the Chernobyl push the buttons, I feel like that's what, that's what public policy is putting forth. Just push the buttons now and blow it up. Well the problem is. Yeah. Rather, yeah. public policy, policy should catch up, understand it, and maybe set a framework and put in laws That's so good, that yeah. we have a clear understanding. Our current government is like that scene in Chernobyl. Yeah. Oh okay, <laughs> that is exactly what's happening, okay. Dave. You know, you can apply that metaphor. You know, well, just do it. Right. <laughs> the is there's no yeah. proper regulation yet. Right. You, you got to get everyone in the room, and everybody has to agree at least on an initial framework. We've started, but we're nowhere near where we need to be. And it's you have to look at safety of our of our nation. 
And that's a big factor. You know, I've gone to Congress as a part of um, cybersecurity women uh, testifying about, against con for Congress and talking about this, and they still don't have a handle on There's nobody like? who's running the show. Describe ship. what it was like there. Um, well, I went down with the Executive Women for Women's Forum, um, which was an amazing group. We went down there, we talked to different people in Congress. They're very open to it. And they realized that we really need to do something. The problem is, it's very disorganized. Sadly, it's way too disorganized. Nobody knows who's calling the shots. There's a ni nice bunch of different groups that are working yeah. towards it, but there's no one at the helm of it saying, all right, let's all fall into place and do it. Little pockets doing little things, but not everybody banding together. That needs to change, it has to change. I'm hoping it's coming down to where it's I think it's going to be, be a revolution in a positive way where, again, yeah. back to my tech for a good thing, yeah. I don't think people yet know how to articulate what tech for good is. There's yep. plenty more use cases where tech could be used for good than there are bad. Bad is always an early adopter before good. We've seen that in the web, the underbelly of multiple sure. trends. But the reality is, I see the bad as bad, but I see so much more good, good going on that could be enabled. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of, that they litigate what's happening for bad, bad, and they screw the good. Well, it's almost like technology, right? You have to be proactive as well as reactive. Everyone was running to be reactive to a problem, but no one was being proactive. But now it, technology is understanding. We have to be proactive as well as reactive. Same like you're saying, John. It has to happen from the right, front. So while you're yeah. here, I want to get you and Dave to weigh in on this, because it's been near and dear to my heart for many years, over a decade. Um, humans and machines, this conversation has been discussed. Here again, Dave, yep. some of the smartest people in the industry are reiterating, Brian from, again, Sumo Logic, he's got great view on this and that's others as well. The role of the human really is important, not yes. just having machines do all this automation. It's not about job replacement, it's more of the, the craft of creating outcomes that are going to be acceptable sure. for defense or for good, the human's critical. Your guys' thoughts. Sure, so we talk automation, right? People are afraid of that. They're saying robots and machines are going to replace us. Not true. Done right, it takes away menial tasks, which will be giving jobs and actually creating jobs in a more meaningful way. You know, I look at, I talk a lot about the human factors of technology and cybersecurity. If think about it, technology is developed to help, a human is developing technology to help a human, a human is using technology to hurt a human. What's the common factor? The human. We're dealing with people, they're not being replaced, there's always going to be humans there. So machines are going to help us with automation, it's going to help us with digital transformation, we'll throw the buzzwords out there, but they're actually meaningful if you dial back and understand that. I think people are weary of it because yeah. they don't understand it. And if they're not understanding how it could actually help an organization, and how it could be used right, then there's fear. So we couple back to education. Education coupled with humans, machines, technology, we're going to have something very strong and really, really good. So it's not something to be fearful of, it's something to educate yourself and be excited about and move along with technology as it advances. Well, machines have always replaced humans, you know, Correct. for various tasks. Yes. So that's sort of natural. For the first time in history, it, 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 we're replacing cognitive tasks, and I think that scares a lot of people. And I think you're right on, Cher. The answer is, is, is not to protect the, the past from the future, it's education. Correct. Because innovation, we've talked about this, yeah. innovation comes from now a combination of things. It's not just Moore's Law or new products that are coming out at some rapid pace. It's the combination of data, artificial intelligence, the cloud for scale. This combinatorial innovation is going to require new creativity, new thinking, and education is at the heart of that. So I think the question is, what can public policy be to foster that? Um, are we teaching the right things? Yes. Uh, is public policy and, and, and public and private partnerships fostering that type of innovation? And so I think there's reasons to be concerned in terms of productivity, impacts on wages, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm an optimist. I think this, the future is very, very bright. Okay, so as we wrap down day one, great to have you on as a guest host. We're going to do a lot more coverage, so we're going to be collaborating and we're going to initiate coverage of the security sector with the Cube. You're going to start seeing us doing a lot more events, extracting the signal from the noise, a lot more community involvement, outreach, looking for participation and help from our friends, Cube alumni, the 8,000 plus Cube alumni that are out there. Join us. If you got some security chops, you know people in security have something to add, we're always open. We're here at Reinforce. What's your guys' thoughts here? I think it's a great event. I think it's going to be one of those moments where we're like, we were present at creation again for another big wave. It's coming. Your yeah. thoughts about Re Reinforce? Well, I think Reinforce has found its niche. I think it's needed. I think cloud security is being embraced. I think there's a real need for it. 
And I think just highlighting those actions that they're taking is very much needed, and we're going to see a lot more out of, it, out of uh, Reinforce, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I mean, critical mass here. I guess 8,000 or yeah. so people that care about security, and specifically care about cloud security, is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I mean, I was impressed way. by the, first of all, I agree, cloud security across the board. I was really impressed by the amount of heavy hitters that are here. Yeah. And, and it's the heavy hitters that aren't the big exec brand names, the CEO, the stuff. You had the working, like a, the working CEOs of the startups, CEOs of startups, the key biz dev people, the key marketing people. CISOs. They're all, yes. And the CISOs are here because they're investing. That's the pain they're, point. They're, they're feeling investing it, they know. together and they're building out in real time, it's really fast, a community around cloud security. So, so it's interesting, so you know, Andy Jassy's not here, you don't, you don't see Teresa, but what you do see is the CISO saying, I'm betting my business on the cloud, I can't scale without the cloud, yes. I have to be at this show. And you're seeing, okay. and maybe it's a little bit of a a Andy and Teresa, let, let go to grow, uh, and, and then sort of pyramid out that Well, I mean, I, 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 I saw Jassy at, at Public Sector Summit, I, I should have asked right, him this, but I, I, I inferred from his response when I did ask him if he's coming, is that, and looking at how they're executing, they don't need the big guns here because the, the team's doing it. So it's one of those, when you have organic chemistry coming together, yep. you don't want the big execs being, go do it. Sure. You've got to let it foster on its own. And that's why I'm impressed by the people here because they're the ones that are putting the sparks of creativity together. They're putting deals together. Relationships are forming. That's how organic yeah. communities build. Yeah, and, and I don't think yeah. the people here want to hear, frankly, from Andy. Yeah. You know, they can hear from, from Andy at, at, at reInvent. Yeah. And so what they want to hear is the substance that yes. they heard in the keynote yeah. today. Security. Well, some serious <laughs> security. Well, I mean. For an inaugural event, this is amazing, yeah. right? For the sheer size of it for a first time event is amazing. And having the heavy hitters, like you said, really invested. And time, yeah. people don't have time. Yeah. And to actually invest their time here and want to be here and want to learn and want to share, yeah. that speaks volumes. And that's not to say that Andy Jassy doesn't have substance. His, his keynotes are among the best and they're always he's, super, but, you know, you know, super he's, substantive. He's scripted, but, he's, but, but, but when it comes to security deep dives, you know, that's, that's you don't want to hear from him, you want to hear from somebody like, like Schmidt today. Well, some public information that I found out that's now public is that um, there are 100,000 sub security subscriptions in AWS Marketplace. Wow. Okay, one million subscriptions paid for in AWS Marketplace as a whole, 100,000 plus security software buys there. Wow. Okay, that's huge. Yes. Huge for a little cottage industry going on called cloud security. Look, look at the rate the industry's growing. Look at Cisco, we were just at Cisco a couple weeks ago. Cisco is a huge company, $40 billion company. Their security practice is growing 21% yes. you know, a year, year over year. I mean, that's huge for a company that's growing you know, basically single digits. Well, we'll, we'll have Josh on, um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I said, just looking at all these large companies that we're all talking to and that we're dealing with, certainly I'm consulting to, people are moving to the cloud and they're saying that one of the big reasons, or the reason, is for extra and more leveled security. So I think cloud is going to be taking the forefront and I think it's going to be much bigger than people really think. And customers are telling us they want more innovation from the security vendor yes. community. And again, that comes from cloud. And the data comes from cloud, comes from you know, machine intelligence. Exactly. Put those things together. Shira, great to have you on. Dave, Thank as you. always, in John, profound insight, taking a here. red eye, you're all day, Leroy <laughs> Warrior, Energizer Bunny. Cube coverage here, AWS Reinforce, day one, day two tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thank you.